Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some romances with disability representation. Happy Disability Pride Month everyone. Um, I am also very excited to say that this is a collaboration with four other lovely people here on booktube you have becky jess lizelle and neva i'll tag everybody down below be sure to go check out their videos and they are also going to be doing rec videos for books with disability representation and then after you're done watching all of their videos if you want even more recommendations this is my seventh recommendation video with disability representation. So you can go watch all the other ones down below as well. I think I have a disability rep playlist uh, filled with all of the videos I've made with disability representation. As you can tell, it's a very near and dear subject on my channel. I love talking about books with disability and chronic illness rep. So let's get into these 10 recommendations. First, I have Rush by Emma Scott. This is one of my favorite books from last year. I love this book so much. It is so slept on. Uh, I think I first heard about this book from Brie and uh, she was no wrong. It's so good. Charlotte is our heroine. She's struggling to make ends meet in New York City. She's a Juilliard graduate, but she's having trouble finding like a job having to do with her music career. Uh, and then one day she ends up snagging this job that has nothing to do with music, uh, but she's going to be the live in caretaker to this very grumpy guy. His name is Noah and he's experienced a lot of trauma and a lot of heartache in his life. He was very well known for doing like extreme sports and then filming himself doing it and writing amazing articles about all the adventures that he goes on. Uh, but one of his last adventures, he went cliff jumping and he got injured and he's now blind from that injury. He is really struggling living with his disability now. He thinks his life is completely over and he's basically given up on everything. So his family ends up hiring Charlotte in hopes to bring him back to life in a sense. I love this so much. If you want like a grumpy hero, he's like the epitome of a grumpy hero. And he slowly but surely falls and softens for Charlotte and also falls in love with her music. There are scenes in here that I think about all the time where he just wants to be in his room all day long and do nothing. Like do just literally stare at a wall for hours. He is so depressed. Like he just doesn't want to do anything with his life. But then when Charlotte is practicing, her violin she plays the violin he goes downstairs and sits on the stairs where she cannot see him and listens to her play for hours i love these characters so much so the representation in here obviously is our hero being blind and i thought the representation was done fairly well again also by the way i mentioned this in every single one of my disability rep videos I cannot speak on the disabilities that I do not have myself. So if you think that the books I'm talking about do not have good representation, please comment down below. I do not want to wreck a book that has poor rep. Next, I have Stolen Touches by Neva Altaj. This is the romance between Maline and Salvatore. Maline is working at this hospital that Salvatore is going to. He goes in for a checkup. Um, I believe he is an amputee and he's also heavily scarred. He was in an accident. Um, so that's the disability representation. And anyway, they end up bumping into each other at the front of this hospital because Maline ends up delivering a baby basically in the parking lot. She's a nurse. And uh, Salvatore just becomes like obsessed with her right from the get go and he becomes her stalker. He also does some digging um, into Maline's past while he's stalking her. And he realizes that she is the daughter to a rivaling mafia family of his. He is the head of one of the mafia families, I think in Chicago. And um, he sees this as the perfect opportunity to make Maline his. He forms an alliance with her father and for he basically forces her to marry him. Salvatore is overprotective to the absolute max. <laughs> I was obsessed with it. The discussion of Salvatore and what he has gone through is definitely a point of this book that I related to and his chronic pain that he deals with um, because of what he's gone through. I really related to as well. I thought this book was very well done. If you want a little bit of a darker read, definitely pick this one up. Then I have A Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan. Our heroine in here is a movie star, TV show star. She basically stars in like like what our game of thrones would be and her character gets killed off in the show and she's kind of lost after her getting fired basically or getting written off from the show um so she needs a little vacation she ends up across this like estate that has like cabins for rent in america and she's like why the heck not let's go on vacation there 
and then she ends up meeting the owner's grandson. Said grandson's name is Lucian. He's an ex-hockey player. He experienced quite a lot, um, many injuries while playing hockey, and now he has chronic migraines. I thought that representation was done so well, um, and one of the only books that I've ever read that has chronic migraine representation. Anyway, they end up having to live fairly close to each other while renting out these cabins, and they fall for each other. He is a very grumpy hero that loves to bake. Like, yes, I'm a big baker, and so that definitely pulled at my heartstrings. If you want a really cute grumpy sunshine contemporary read, definitely pick this one up. Next, I have Hush Darling by Avery Kingston. I've talked about this book quite a lot on my channel recently, so I'll be quick on this one. But this is about a heroine who is married. She's running away from her very abusive husband. She finds out she's pregnant and she's like, my baby is not gonna be growing up around a dad who hits people and abuses them, like not happening. So she runs away from her husband. She fakes her own death. A few hours into her trip, her car ends up crashing. It's a snowstorm and the only place that she can find shelter nearby is this a cabin in the middle of nowhere. Um, and that's a cabin that Tanner owns. So Tanner owns this large property on this land and he rents cabins out to people for like vacations and stuff. And he notices that one of the cabins he owns has like smoke coming out of it, like a fire's being lit. And he's like, uh, who's in that cabin? That's not rented out to anybody. So he goes to investigate and finds a heroine who is absolutely terrified. So he's gonna help take care of her, um, but he doesn't know that she is married. She doesn't know she has, he doesn't know she has an abusive husband. He doesn't even know that she's pregnant. So there's a lot of secret keeping and stuff going on in here, but I could not help but fall in love with Tanner. He is deaf and he communicates via ASL and a heroine's trying to learn ASL while staying with him um, because she really wants to communicate with him. He also has a dog that helps him, which I loved his dog as well. Um, but I really love the discussion of disabilities in here. I think Avery Kingston does a great job of that. She makes sure to incorporate disabilities in almost every single one of her books. The Coldest Winter by Brittany Cherry does have disability representation. This is a forbidden romance between Milo and Starlet. Starlet ends up being Milo's uh, TA. She's in college to become a teacher and she becomes the student aide to do like basically her internship of clinicals. I was in school to be a teacher, so like basically a semester of clinical teaching, you need to do that in order to graduate with her teaching certificate. So she is basically assisting one of the teachers in this high school where Milo is at, he is a senior, um, he's 18, uh, and they're shocked to see each other um, in this classroom <laughs> because like a month or two ago, they had like a one night thing at a college party. And so she definitely did not expect this giant, very good looking man um, to be one of the students sitting in the classroom that she's gonna be assisting in for the semester. Has its forbidden moments for sure. They're both dealing with grief. Um, the heroine lost, I believe her mother and the hero um, lost his mom as well. And he's going through some things with his dad at the moment. And he is our character in here who is going through a um, disability diagnosis. Throughout the book, he's being diagnosed with a condition that um, is slowly having him become blind. So that is a very prevalent part in this book. Brittany Cherry knows how to write a book. There are certain scenes in this book that make me cry my eyes out. And the grief depicted in this book was absolutely heartbreaking. <laughs> like it's so relatable, it's heartbreaking to read about, um, but definitely a book that I really loved this year. If you want a little novella, I have A Baby for the Outcast by Cassie Mint. The heroine of the story gets hired to be the live-in assistant to the hero who is an artist. He, I think is a veteran and he, walks around with a cane he has a limp and he experiences quite a lot of chronic pain so that's the representation in here and he needs an assistant to help him get supplies and help him around the house because he cannot move very well the hero ends up dreaming about the heroine like constantly so when she comes into his room at one point during a storm because she's scared he thinks like nothing of it he thinks that it's just one of his dreams so they spend the night together they you know what I mean? Like they have fun together, uh, but he thinks it's a dream. Like he wakes up and she's not there. And she's very hurt by this because like he doesn't really address it afterward, but he honestly thought that it was a dream. And he's very shocked when he finds out that she's pregnant. He's like, how are you pregnant? <laughs> Who have you been with? Cause it hasn't been with me, but they have been together. This is a short, quick read that I really enjoy. And the chronic pain rep in here, I really felt for the hero in here. Like I really appreciated the representation. I of course have some alien romances I would love to mention. And then I also have a historical. So first I have Frantor by Honey Phillips. This is book number six in the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series. 
Um, these are basically uh, romances where there are seven brothers in arms who live on this ranch on this ice planet. There's a neighboring, like many miles away, neighboring uh, human village. And one of the heroes thinks it's a grand old idea to go just like kidnap a bunch of the human women and bring them back for his brothers. And they're going to be like brides. Um, <laughs> and that's going to be their wives. Like he doesn't know any better. He's like, oh yeah, they're just going to be our wives. Like he doesn't realize that that's probably not a good idea. Grantor is one of the brother in arms that is definitely a recluse. He does not show his face a lot because he was injured in war and he now has a prosthetic arm and he is heavily scarred and his like worst fear in life is for people to be scared of him now. Um, so he just keeps to the shadows, he keeps to himself and has just accepted that he's gonna be living his life in solitude. So he's a little bit shocked when his brother ends up depositing a woman unconscious on his doorstep in the middle of a snowstorm. Her name is Flory and she is the chef of the human village. She owns like the restaurant in town. She loves cooking. I loved the cooking aspects of this book. Made me so hungry. And she's obviously not very happy when she wakes up in a strange place, doesn't know where she is and she can't leave because it's like a raging snowstorm outside. So it's basically forced proximity because Flory and Frantor have to live in his like little cabin together, but Frantor doesn't want Flory to see his face and be scared of him. So he keeps the shadows and like has her stay upstairs while he's downstairs or vice versa. Like he makes sure they never see each other. Um, so they end up falling for each other without ever seeing the other person, which I love those romances. Like Frantor would be absolutely heartbroken if Flory saw him and was scared of him. So that's why he never really shows his face but Flory is like trying to tell him like I am falling in love with you I will love you no matter what you look like I was a sucker for this book um the chronic pain representation in here oh my gosh there's one scene that I cannot get out of my head where he is having like muscle spasm and muscle pains because of his chronic pain in one of his legs and she massages him like and it gets a little the hot there it's so good it's so good <laughs> next time rescued by an alien by amanda milo this is book two in the stolen by an alien series this series definitely should not be read as standalones by the way you could technically read frantor as a standalone based off of the summary i gave you um but this series i feel like is definitely geared towards reading them in order but this is book two so you only have to read like book one before you get to this one this is about zadon and callie callie is a human woman who was taken from earth and put into slavery she has a lot of ptsd from what she's experienced from aliens and zadon is a type of alien that is very obsessive about his mate like that's what their alien species is um like they're very 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 protective and obsessive. So Zaydon, when he meets Callie, has like deemed himself to be her mate and he's gonna try everything to keep her safe. Yeah, definitely read this book after reading book one. These books in this series definitely build off of each other. They're not really meant to be read as standalones. The hero in this one is hard of hearing, so that's the representation in here. And I thought it was a great little addition. Like it didn't like make the whole book. Like there are a lot of books out there that like the disability is like the sole focus of the book where like in this one, like the character just happens to be hard of hearing. It's not like a major plot point in the book, which I really appreciate because sometimes it doesn't need to be a main plot in the book. Next day of Claiming His Mate by A.G. Wilde or this whole series. This is book one in the Faded Mates of uh, the Atari series. Um, and A.G. Wilde told me that every book in this series has a heroine who is disabled. I've only read book one and book two, um, but I'm just gonna be talking about book one today. But if you wanna read a whole alien romance series featuring characters with disabilities, definitely pick this series up. I love A.G. Wilde's writing. Just be aware like her books do get pretty dark at points. Like it has definitely hits happy, funny, comedic relief moments, but it also gets pretty dark. Like they're talking about slavery and essay and stuff like that. Marion is our human heroine and she and a bunch of other women think that they've won at this all expenses paid luxury space cruise. Um, but when she shows up to the cruise, she realizes, huh, everyone else on this ship also has physical disabilities and they're all women. Like, what's the coincidence there? I thought we all just won like lottery tickets. Like a few hours into their space trip, um, their ship ends up getting commandeered by some evil aliens and almost the entire spaceship is completely massacred. Like it's dark, okay, it gets dark. Um, and the only survivors are few, four human women who are going to be the heroines for all four of these books. The heroines don't know this, but as the reader you do, um, the women have basically been sold by their American human government um, to pay the Atari aliens to like be like a sign of good faith for a 
like tree they want to put on with them because the Atari are dying out because they don't have any women to uh, be fit their faded mates, you know? So the Atari show up to the spaceship going to claim they're human women. They also don't know that they're they're like not willingly the women and they just find the massacre and they are absolutely distraught. They're like, what happened? They go and look at the footage and find out like the, the security footage and finds out that four human women have been taken by these gross, grotesque, evil aliens. And so a bunch of the aliens go out to find them all across space. So Marion is the heroine in this one and Aknar is the hero who is tasked to go track her down and find her. Marion was born with a limb difference. She does not have her arm from the elbow down. Uh, so that is the representation in here if you want to read about a character with a limb difference. And lastly, I have a historical to recommend to you. This is technically like a winter Christmas read, but I absolutely loved the disability rep in here. This is How the Duke Saved Christmas by Anna Harrington. This is the second chance romance between Clara and Michael. They were engaged to be married. They were very much in love, but then Clara got in a carriage accident that left her with an injury where she is not able to walk anymore. Um, Michael is a Duke and she thinks that because she cannot walk anymore, like she would be a horrible, duchess for him so she ends up distancing herself from michael and basically cuts things off but this whole time michael thinks the reason why their engagement ended is because she blames him for the carriage accident that she was in which is not the case like we know that as the reader um so it's now when this book takes place a little time later um it's christmas time and clara and her brother are kind of stuck like in the snow uh during in a, in a carriage um on the way home um, and they just happen to be by Michael's estate and there's nowhere to stay for the night. So her brother ends up taking her to Michael's estate. Michael lets them stay with open arms, but he definitely has an ulterior motive. He wants to have Clara fall back in love with him by Christmas time. Michael is one of my favorite historical heroes I've ever read about ever. He is so swoony, like talk about a dedicated man. Like he is full on there for Clara and is there to show her like you are capable in every way possible of doing anything because she's really struggling. She's very depressed, is very hard on herself because of what she is unable to do. Um, and Michael's there to show her like, you can still live even though you can't walk. One of my favorite lines, oh, I hear a locust. If you hear that. <laughs> um, one of my favorite lines from this book is from Michael and he's telling Clara, you have no idea how much I loved you, how much I still love you. And that love for you could never be a burden. It would only ever be a blessing. Like, I love this man so much. You need to put this on your Christmas TBR, okay? Or like December TBR, whatever you wanna read it. You can read it now. It's so good. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romances with disability representation. Be sure to go check out the four other creators that um, also have made recommendation videos. Also leave your recommendations in the comment section down below. I would love to get more recommendations. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me um, some snow, a snow emoji in the comment section down below. It is too hot. I want some snow. I want some cold weather. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.